Tucked away in a quiet corner of Comanion in North Caradigion, lies one of Wales's hidden industrial gems. This is a Stradanion metal mine. Now abandoned and silent, during the last few decades of the 19th century, a Stradanion was alive with the noise and clatter of heavy machinery and men at work. During the 1800s, mining had created vast wealth for a lucky few. The Industrial Revolution was in full swing and had a voracious appetite for metal. Almost everything, from chemicals to printing, buildings to battleships, needed the ores of all kinds of metals, and the only way to get it was to dig. Seeing an opportunity to make money, a Lancastrian entrepreneur called Adam Mason leased the land at Estradanion, where mining for lead and other metals had been carried on in a small way since the 18th century. Convinced that the mine would make his fortune, Mason sank over £3,000 into state-of-the-art equipment, that's over a quarter of a million pounds in today's money, and he celebrated its official opening on the 21st of September 1877 with a sumptuous dinner for the workmen, agents and several gentlemen. Its owner may have had big ambitions, but the mine itself was relatively modest. A report of 1891 notes just 11 miners were working at the site, nine men labouring underground and two on the surface. Mining for metal was back-breaking work and much of Estradanion's activity went on deep under the earth. Here, miners worked long hours in near darkness, drilling holes into the rock, packing the holes with gunpowder and blasting the rock apart into rubble. Covered in dust and with ears ringing from the blast, the miners would then shovel the rubble into wheelbarrows and wagons ready for transportation to the mine shaft. Once at the mine shaft, it was loaded into huge iron buckets known as kibbles and hoisted to the surface. Any job working below the earth's surface is dangerous, and mining at Estradanion was no different. Accidents were common. Working conditions were wet, filthy and dark, each miner wearing just a single handle on his helmet. As a result of working in such desperate conditions, Miners often developed life-threatening illnesses, such as bronchitis, pneumonia and silicosis. Heart failure was also common, often brought on by miners racing up and down ladders in the deep shafts. Alongside accidents and illness, flooding was a major problem and could bring work to a standstill. This was overcome at Estradanion with the installation of an underground water wheel. The water wheel operated drainage pumps, as well as a drum for winding the rocks from the deeper levels of the mine. This is a hidden treasure of the mine, and is unique in its survival. Almost five metres in diameter, this water wheel is so large that it would have been assembled underground by Camberite. In fact, water was vital to almost every process at the mine. It powered the water wheels, which in turn powered the machinery, and was also needed for the various treatment processes. To bring water to the mine, a leet was built, running from the River Anion one and a half miles upstream and contouring the hillside. This was then channelled around the mine by wooden troughs, known as launders, and the flow of water regulated by sluice gates. Once the rocks had travelled up the mine shaft and reached daylight, they were tipped into one of the two stone storage bins. Now the difficult task of recovering the metal ore began. First the rocks needed washing and sorting. Water was poured through the storage bins to remove any mud and slime. The washed rocks were then raked onto a picking table. Here keen eyes and hands could sort through the rocks, separating out the precious metal ore from any waste fragments of rock. This job was often carried out by women and children. At Estradanion, we know that in 1891, two boys aged between 13 and 18 were carrying out this task. The process didn't end there. A typical piece of metal ore at this stage was still a fusion of different fragments of minerals and metals. Everything from unproductive rock and quartz to silver bearing lead, zinc and copper. It was vital to separate out the precious metal ores from the surrounding waste. 
to do this, the rocks were crushed by machines driven by the mine's largest water wheel. First, a stonebreaker broke the ore brought from the picking table into small pieces, and then a huge crusher with rollers smashed it even smaller. Once reduced to the size of coarse gravel, the metal ore was passed through a chute onto the next stage, the jiggers. Rather like a large washing machine, the jigger used water and the rapid jerking motion to separate the valuable fragments of metal ore from the waste. Any pure ore that came out at this stage was removed and bagged, whilst the remaining rocks were sent through to the buddles to retrieve very fine particles of ore. Every last particle had to be collected. Even the muddy water from the initial washing stage was put through the buddle. At the end of the process, the wastewater from the buddles, still loaded with poisonous metallic compounds, needed purifying before it could be fed back into the River Anion. This was done with an elaborate system of settling troughs and ponds. The mine also had a blacksmith shop, where all the ironwork was made, serviced and repaired. A gunpowder magazine, set away from the other buildings to prevent explosion, and a series of tramways that transported ore, waste and other materials around the site. Once every last particle was retrieved, the metal ore was bagged up and transported out of the valley by horse and cart, eventually ending up at the smelting furnaces of South and North Wales. It was the culmination of a lengthy, arduous process. Despite all the hard work, Estradanion never became a huge commercial success. In fact, some years proved spectacularly unprofitable. In 1883, Thomas Thompson, chief agent of the mine, reported, no ore sold this quarter. By 1885, the situation had worsened to, we have not made any returns whatever during the last year. Looking back, we can now see that Adam Mason and his high technology arrived at the Stradanion simply too late. The ores were becoming exhausted, mining costs were increasing, and British production was being threatened and eventually destroyed by cheap foreign imports. A Stradanion only operated sporadically from the 1870s and finally closed in 1903, when much of the machinery was sold or scrapped. Adam Mason may have never made his fortune at Estradanion, but the surviving remains are, at least, a rich reminder of Wales's proud industrial heritage. <laughs>